Good morning, everyone. This is JJ. Welcome. I'm here with my brother, Nellen. Nellen, how are you this morning? Or I'm good. Afternoon? And yeah, JJ, thanks a lot. And on behalf of the FQ Trading Group, uh, we all welcome you back. It is so great to have you back over here. And especially your last session created a lot of buzz. A lot of people have been talking about balance and how to draw the balance and does the balance work in all the markets, all the instrument, how does the balance work in markets where there is no overnight? So there are lots of questions yeah. and to provide continuity and also to, you know, to dive a bit deeper. We are so thankful that you have joined us back. Uh, welcome back, JJ. And thank you. Uh, thank you. Over to you. Well, good stuff. Good stuff. Good. It's really, it's nice to be here. So what we're going to do is uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll do some screen shares and, um, you know, Nolan's actually done a really good job of taking your questions and we're going to answer these questions um, and show you how it works. Um, Nolan's going to share his screen and I will mark up the screen and together we'll try and make this a little bit more clear. Um, the thing about this, it's really not a method of trading because it's really actually the business that takes place. So all of my trading, um, you know, when you take a trade, it's, it's a business, um, it's a business decision, right? You're embarking on a business transaction. And so there's certain parameters to that transaction and the transaction has to actually work in the business. It's not like, you know, if you're selling sunglasses and it's raining, you're not going to make a lot of money. Right. right. Or, you know, if you're selling fur coats, uh, you know, in the middle of India in the summer, probably not the best idea, you know. Absolutely. So a, a lot of it is common sense, but a lot of people don't know that because nobody on the inside ever tells you, um, you know, what the simple basics of the business are. And everything that we teach is surrounded on basic business practices. And some of it, like, the trade that we teach, which is our foundational trade, which allows you to make money, is based on the oldest principle in business since business was invented, and that is the ladder right. supply. So, Leah, let's get to it. Sure. So, uh, like, like last time, we delved a bit into the balance part, and there were a lot of questions about what is a balance, actually. So, if we can start from there, do a quick summary of what is balance and why is it important then it will yeah. provide the right foundation for people to start marking up their own balance zones, actually. Sure. So, folks, what balance is, and, and now maybe you can share a screen. Of sure, the, coming up now. Yeah. Um, so this is the 30-minute screen for Nifty. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the screen is visible now. Yeah. And this covers almost one and a half month, starting 18 December to last day. 30 minutes chart of nifty okay perfect so um i'm gonna mark up your screen here this is a 30 minute chart now ladies and gentlemen a chart right whether it's a 30 minute a 15 minute a one day a, a weekly all a chart is is a representation of sales remember these things are called markets right that's why it's the stock market the futures market the options market Everybody kind of forgets the phrase, the word market. Now, what right. is the object of a market? It is to bring in a bunch of cheap things and sell it at a higher price for profit, right? The thing is, these markets are continuous, right? It's like having a car lot where you put something for sale and they bring it back and, it, you know, you sell it to them for $5, you buy it back at three. You sell it to them at $4, you buy it back at two fifty. And that continuously happens over and over and over again. And the chart is just a graphical representation of how sales are going in a time period, right? right? So a daily chart tells you how sales are compared to the last few days and the last week, right? A half an hour chart, right? The 30 minute is just telling you every half hour, how are sales, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's a sales chart, there'll be a cost basis or an area where the people, and this is the other big concept, right? Number one, it's a market. Number two, there are people in the market who act as wholesale, <laughs> okay? And that is that they 
buy and sell in large quantities, okay? And they have inventory. Just like when you go, you know, you go to the store, there's an inventory of eggplant or there's an inventory of rice, you see? Right. And they've bought that inventory at a cheaper price and they're going to resell it for profit, okay? Now, when you look at a chart, you can see the accumulation and distribution of inventory. You can see accumulation of inventory here and then distribution in these tiny sideways, or you guys would call them consolidation areas. Mm -hmm. right? Then you have a brief rush where people come in and then at that particular price, for example, nobody wants to pay that. So mm -hmm. the, the people who own it down here put it on sale, just like a store. Right. See? And then when they come to that level of inventory, the price stops, mm. consolidates a little bit. Now, if people are not willing to pay that price, they'll come down to the next level of inventory. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this is the concept of balance, right? You're asking what balance is, right? Right, well, right. Okay, what, what balance right. is, is when those large wholesalers are acquiring inventory. Hmm. Okay, so what happens in a balance zone? Let's look at this one, for example, right? We had beautiful distribution here. We had a balance zone, for example, right? We can't see the markup now. Yeah, now we can see. Thanks. Yeah, okay. sure. So yeah. here, here's the balance zone. In fact, you could cut this in two balance zones. You can mm -hmm. cut it here, and then the you know another one here. So you can right. see mm -hmm. those wholesale traders are on both sides of the balance. Let's just use a big balance zone, right? This is a very interesting point when you say both sides of the balance, because yes. a lot of misconception here is that someone has to lose for other to win, and vice versa. So if you can yeah. just, that's sure. a very good point, Jijin. That's a, that's a great thing. I have heard this. Somebody has to lose for someone to win. That is the furthest thing from the truth because there are people who provide liquidity when your mm -hmm. order... Now, in the US markets, they call them market makers or wholesalers. Mm -hmm. right. Now, in Indian markets, I know that they will have large institutions that have inventory of a futures contract or an options contract or a stock. Mm -hmm. And when... When those retail orders come in, the wholesaler fills those orders, right? Mm, now, the right. reason why there's a wholesale element in the market is because of this. Let's just use a simple example of a $5 stock, and you went to buy 1,000 shares of a $5 stock. If okay. there was no wholesaler that would sell you all of those 1,000 shares at $5, this is how the transaction would go. You'd buy 100 shares at 5 and maybe a hundred at five and a quarter, and maybe another hundred at five fifty, and maybe another hundred at six, because nobody is willing to sell it to you. Right. So for you to get your order at the price you want, somebody has to take the risk and fill that order. Okay. All right. So you come to me, you're a good client, right? Hey, JJ, I need a thousand shares of this stock at five bucks. I don't have any. Mm -hmm. What am I gonna say? turn you away because there's thousands of other people who will fill that order. So right. I go, you know what? Uh, sure. Here, here's a thousand shares at $5. Now I sold it to you short. Mm. Okay. And now I'll try and, and then I'll now I'll go and bid the stock at 495 to try and buy it back. Okay. Right. The difference is the spread. And I will hope to make a nickel from that. Sometimes I'll lose a nickel. Right? right or five cents but over billions of transactions it's a very profitable business that's why citadel who's the biggest market maker in the world makes 16 billion dollars every quarter or some crazy thing like that oh, right? yeah. per year right it's a very lucrative business the man who owns that company he buys 200 million dollar houses like we buy a candy bar <laughs> right. Right? right so right. it's a very yeah. lucrative business and these are the people i worked with all my life as a professional, right? Mm -hmm. So what balance is, is that say, you know, this is how it works. Say this is $5 
and this is three and this is four, just for example, right? Okay. So what happens is as a market maker <clears throat> or a wholesaler, my job is every time it dips under four, I buy it down to three. Okay. And then as soon as it gets above four, I sell it all the way to five. So I am both sides of four dollars. This so is a way... sure, this please is, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a concept that nobody in retail trading, and not just India, right? Even the Americans don't know that this exists, right? They're all under the false misconception that somebody has to lose money for me. There is somebody here who is trading, say, if this is a futures instrument, they will mm -hmm. be on both sides of this from January 2nd to the to 12th. For these 10 days, they might be both sides of this for a million contracts on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, when it, as soon as they, it gets under three, uh, three uh, under four, they're a buyer, right? Okay. There's $4, there's $3. They buy everything under four and then they sell everything over four. Okay. Right? The reason it doesn't break out of this, this mm -hmm. area, is because the market sometimes is waiting for information. Right. Okay. So now right. while this balance occurs... Here's mm -hmm. the most interesting thing about markets I've learned and in life, right? Mm -hmm. If you show price stability, people will come in. Right. And when people come in, you can raise price. You see? Yeah. So that is a very important concept to balance. This concept of balance, Dalton and Stadelmeyer, who invented market profile, talk about it, but they don't tell you how to use it in a practical manner. It, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, they, yeah. it sounds very complicated. And I love these guys. I have insane respect for them, but they are intellectuals and they don't, you know, they don't talk to regular people, right? So that balance right. zone, when we look at a balance zone, right? Let, let's, let's go and find a balance zone right now. So okay. if for me to look what balance is, is uh, if you can make the chart just a little bigger, just, just a Should time. we go at a shorter time frame or this no, is... No, 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 I can, I can show you. Oh, this is... Okay. Just go back to where okay. you were. No, the other way, the other way. Uh, this way? Uh, no, go back to, to current, more current. More current. Yeah, right there. So now this is a beautiful balance zone, right? Okay. I'm going to draw it and then I'm going to tell you why I drew it. Okay. Okay. So what this shows... What, how we look for balance, and this is the simplest thing, you just have to practice it a lot. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're looking for a low and a high. And when we can't break that high, we go back to that low. And when we can't break that low, we go back to that high. Okay. It's the simplest thing in the world. And all you have to do is do it a few hundred times and your eye will automatically go and look for that balance zone, right? So mm. then that's the first thing we do. Then what we do is we double the balance zone to find the upper targets. Right. Okay. Now, the reason we do that is once again, a business reason. Okay. The business reason is when you double the balance zone, it shows you this is your cost basis or what right. you paid for the goods. And this is double your profit. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? That's all it is. So if right. you go now and you draw that balance zone using... Let me draw a yeah, proper sure. rectangle. Right? Yeah. So this is good, right? Yeah, exactly. Now you take that... But just one you, second. Yeah, you take it and you double it to get your targets. And what you use this doubling for is you use it, now you have a static reference. Right. Because just... VWAP, VWAP, moving averages, they move around a lot. Right? Here now you have a static reference that is built on the oldest business principle that's ever what? existed. Right? So this is, so we'll draw four, right? Yeah. First you start with two. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Two. Just start with two. Right. 
So you know, if when a market breaks out of balance, right, mm. that's your target. Right. That's your first target. Another nice thing about this is say you build a position here. Now, this is the trade that we that we love, right? The trade is when the market looks below and then fails and comes back mm. up. You guys call this like a V, right? Right, right. V shape recovery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Now the, the reason for that V is that there are sellers here who sell the product and then their sell orders are completed, right? Right. When those sell orders are completed, two things happen. Short sellers will start buying the market here, mm -hmm. right? right? That's number one. Then number two, wholesale traders will start buying the market for their inventory. Right. And then the last set of traders are the longs like us who come in and buy. Mm -hmm. This creates a shortage of supply what does a market do when supply runs out? Price goes up. Price goes up, right. So this is how I would trade this, right? I would look look below, and I don't take the trade until it comes back up over this level. Right, right. Right? So when it comes back up over this level, I'm long, right? And right. my stop is underneath that candle. So let me just expand it a bit so that it becomes... Yeah, yeah. Right. And we will switch, we will flip to one minute chart for better understanding. We are sure, using sure. the chart for better understanding of how the inventory works. Yeah. And for tactical trades, we will shift to one minute chart in a minute. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is once you learn how to do this trade on a one minute chart and you mm -hmm. get good at it, right? right? You use that trade to pay your phone bill or the electric. Mm, right. Right. Then as you get better at doing it, you, you can increase the trade in size and time frame that you hold the trade. It's scalable, mm -hmm. right? But you learn on a minute chart so you don't hurt yourself, right? Mm, right? Then you can scale it up to a day, right? And trade it, you know, during the daytime. Now, here's how the trade works. You have trapped long inventory. These people who bought it, right? right. They are looking for this. That doesn't happen. Right. When that doesn't happen, what they do is they start to sell. Right. When they start to sell. The people who own it here can sell it at cheaper prices, so they start to compete and knock the market down. Mm -hmm. right? These people get flushed out. The people who own it here sell it down to this level, mm -hmm. use that money to buy it, right? right? And the short sellers help because they're the first to buy. Right. Then the second, that's where the fail comes in, right? Mm -hmm. When it looks below this box and comes back up, right? Now, this is a day, this is a uh, 30, 30 minute, minute time, right? right? So once that comes up and it fails to take out that level, that's mm -hmm. where you go long, right? Okay. Now, your stop, right? If now if you have a big account and you build a long position here, because this is a 30 minute, right? right? Your warning level will be this candle and your hard stop will be this candle. If you have a small right. account, your stop will be here. Right. Right? These are what we call structural stops. Now, where's your first target? Your first target is the middle, at uh, the top of balance. Right. Okay, because when you look below balance and fail, the target is the top of balance. Right. 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 So if you get long here, that's your first target. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And that is a good trade, right? From 21,400 oh, to 490. It's a very good trade. Right? 100 points almost, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, once you get better at it, if it, you know, it's going to come back and look below here, and then you can stay in it to the next target, which is the middle there, mm -hmm. right? So once, once you get good at this part of the trade, then this part of the trade happens. And it's, it's completely amazing that after a while, when these, when these expand out, you can hold to three, four zones, depending on your skill, the amount of money you have in your account. But when you're learning how to do this, mm -hmm. right? And we're gonna show you how to do it on a one minute candle now, right? right. Identify the balance, First, don't trade it right away, 
right? Okay. Once you start doing this, the trick is to watch it at first. Okay. Right? Because most traders will just jump in and start trading and start losing money. Then right. they start talking about all this nonsense of trading psychology and all of these things, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Which is a crutch, right? Psychology is a crutch for those people who don't know what they're doing, right? I think if, in the class, I have heard you speaking that it is better to be late in the trade than to be early in the trade, actually. It is, it is because when you're late to the trade, you let the large money people work the area out. Can you show in the chart or maybe we will see in the one minute chart that will sure. give us better opportunity, Perfect. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So shall we switch to one minute chart now? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So this is the one minute chart of previous day. And for the viewers, the red line is the VWAP. Yellow line is one standard deviation. Blue is two standard deviation. And green is three standard deviation. So should we stick to this day or should we move to a previous day? No, no this is perfect. We can use okay. this. Sure. Let right. me just so, expand it yeah. vertically. Sure. So right there, stop. We'll use this as our balance. Right? Okay. We'll we'll use this area here as our balance, right? And then you can double it to the upside. Or okay. if you want to show a look below and fail, which is a really nice one, is this one right here. So yeah, use okay. this one right here. So should we first do the balance over here or straight uh, away? Move? Uh, right here, we can do a balance right here. So, okay, over here, right? This one. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is the balance zone. Yeah, I, yeah, let me see. Yeah, that's perfect. Right there. Yeah, yeah you had it. Okay. Yeah, right there. Beautiful. Right. And then we will double it. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is the simplest way of learning how to become consistently profitable mm -hmm. because it keep what it does is you do the same thing every day. Oh, and right. I don't know what shorting is like in, in India, but in the US, right, they've made shorting very glamorous because of these stupid movies, right? The big short. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, and let, if you're trading a $2,000 account, you can't hold a short position for six months, right? right? You know, right. so people, shorting is very sophisticated in a market that doesn't have a lot of supply, mm -hmm. right? And because interest rates are low and because of the asset gathering revenue model in capital markets now, people don't sell. Like in, in the States, they don't sell their stock. They hold onto it and they borrow money against it and they write the interest off against right. Right. their loan. So they don't incur any capital gains taxes. Right. That's why markets never go down for a long period of time because the, well, the sell-offs are just inventory corrections. So even two days back on after FOMC, we saw a huge inventory correction and people were expecting it to be the end of the world. And then yeah. we are... <laughs> and then we high. And then you high. high. Yeah. And right. I'll explain that dynamic too because what happens is when you flush a market lower, you shake out a lot of the weaker hands. Right. And right. also, for example, so if you had 100,000 shares for sale up at the top, when it drops down, you and say the short sellers bought 30,000 of those contracts, you've effectively taken 30,000 contracts out of the 100,000 that will not right. be offered for resale at higher prices. So what mm -hmm. you do is every time you flush a market, you reduce the amount of inventory because short selling is a, when they close, when they buy, bid to close and cover their short, they are effectively taking stock, supply out of the market. That's okay. why markets rebound higher, right? Because what you've done is you've, you've taken out the people who could sell at higher prices, mm -hmm. you flush right. them out lower and you've taken out the um, you know the short sellers have added to take out supply, so it's almost like when Apple buys back stock and returns it to the treasury, the right. uh, the actually amount of tradable units decreases, and that's why right. price rapidly moves like it did yesterday, and people mm -hmm. always get trapped shorting at the bottom, right? Which so, also helps propel price higher. 
So exactly this has happened over here. Like we see a pinch or sort of a two candles, they go below the balance and then we see a violent up move, which goes like up to plus two balance zones actually. Yeah. So for example, here, say we were doing the look below and fail. So this is our balance, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's times one and you'd have two of these. Right. right. Two so I'll make three. one more once. Yeah, that, that's perfect. Perfect. That's good. So if this was our trade, when see we're losing this high and this these lows, and when we look below these lows, do we go right back to that high? Right. right. So what we're doing now, when you take the look below and fail trade, so here's the look below and here's the fail. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fail is the back side of the trade. This is the front side, this is the back side. The mm -hmm. fail is what we want to take. We, when it reclaims this level, we go long. You put your stop underneath that candle. If you have a bigger account, you can put your stop under that candle, right? Mm. If you're building a position and say you're buying 10 contracts here, right? Mm -hmm. This is your warning level, right? Okay. If it breaks that candle, uh-oh, warning, warning, right? And if it breaks mm -hmm. that one, you're out. Now here, what happens is there's a standard deviation, right? Right here. Yellow so one. if you if you were to buy this level, you know that there's going to be a seller here, and you're going to come back to this level. Correct. Right. So you know if you if you're just testing this out, you're long and you get out. Right. Before your first target, because there's a standard deviation there. Mm. Okay. So now on the second flush you'll notice mm. that the low is higher, right? What does that mean, right? It means the bid has moved up to that low. Mm. And then the second uh, look below and fail takes you mm. right through that standard deviation because you right. flushed out the seller here, down here, and now that's what I'm talking about. Excellent. And Actually, this that, is the most basic sorry. stuff. Like No indicators are needed, nothing. It is no just- No indicators, no stuff. fancy yeah. software. This is just, as they say in, in where I grew up in Canada, it's just good old fashioned horse sense, common <laughs> right. sense, right? right. This right. Because I grew up with farmers and cowboys and hillbillies. And so these people were not, you know, they might be really smart, but they did everything in a simple way. Now, here's the thing about trading that everybody, especially because, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, my mom's from Bangalore and, and you know, I most of all my family, they're all they're all educated. And the smarter you are, sometimes the harder it is to trade. It is because you have to act like a merchant at at the market. Right. Right. So what you have to do is just take all of those things about fractals and moving averages and Fibonacci's and just put them away just for a little bit so you can mm -hmm. understand that it's a market. Now Trading to me is like a street fight, right? It is. It, you really want to practice this over and over and over again because I have a five-step method to trading for this <laughs> trade. And what that does is it helps you identify the balance, test it. You always mm. test it. You watch it first, and then you test it using a smaller position. In the US, we have this thing called the micro and the mini. The micro right. allows you to test it and maybe lose 5 or $10. I don't know right. if India has such an object, but what you want to do then, you would size down and use it with one or two contracts or whatever unit you're going to use, right? And use right. it with very tight risk, right? Okay. Because when you're learning how to do this, it's going to take time. And the best way to learn how to trade is execution. But you always have to remember that what we're trying to do is we're trying to tra train your reflexes so you're comfortable in a trade because... A lot of the times when you're in a trade, it's like when you're in a fight and you get hit in the face, you don't know how to react, right? right? Sometimes right. things will not go well. So you have to right. train yourself physically to be able to get out of a trade quickly, right? Without so even thinking. About, so when you're talking about practice, and you have been doing, you took almost 12 years to develop this concept. What oh, sort yeah. of a training frame you think a new trader requires to practice just this one setup so that one is comfortable doing it, taking it, 
and then scaling I, it up. Today. I think you have to take this trade 500 times before you're good at it. Now, this is like any other skill, right? right. But once you learn this trade, mm -hmm. you can adapt it from right. this particular instance because mm -hmm. the trade is based on right. the most simple business concept that's the oldest business concept ever since the first caveman sold another caveman right. a rock, right? right? And that right. is when you run out of a supply of something, the price goes up. So viewers, uh, JJ talked about the five step. It is the same document which we had shared, thanks to JJ who shared with me uh, a week back. I will share again, that document has the entire process of identifying the balance zone. And please go through it once again, once you are watching this video uh, on YouTube. Thanks a lot. JJ, please go ahead. Yeah, so the, the thing about this setup is you start, what I do in my my futures room um, at microefutures.com is what mm -hmm. we do is I teach these guys to do this so you make 10, 15, 20 dollars a day. Right? right. Then you scale it up to a few hundred. Mm -hmm. Right. Most of my guys and ladies in the room that, you know, once they do this for six months, eight months, you know, they're making five hundred a thousand dollars a day. Wow, nice. Right? And that that's and that you can scale this up now. You can scale this up because I have traders who make five, ten thousand dollars a day doing this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can scale it up on a swing time frame too, where you can, you know, the the it's it's the limit. I mean, if you know, I have an institutional guy who uses this and you know, he's a 20, 30, 40 million dollar a month trader. Wow. Right. I mean, yeah, he's a nine figure, 10 figure trader. I mean, I mean, he's got an ISDA account, which means you need, you know, a billion and a half dollars to to maintain. They have a fund. Yeah. Right? But, but this they is talk about in the the big short movie, right? The ISDA yeah, account. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I remember when these guys made fool of themselves. <laughs> yeah. So right. these guys, yeah, no, so it, it's scalable. All you gotta do right. is learn how to ride the bicycle first. Then right, you can start right. doing all the fancy tricks. But Absolutely. the one nice thing about this trade is you're going to make money while you learn. It's going to be frustrating at first because first you got to look at these balance zones and then you've got to be able to test them and trade them. But it's like anything else, right? The first time you get into a car, you're not going to be able to drive like Lewis Hamilton, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's going to take some practice. And the biggest thing for retail traders to remember is Risk management is the most important thing when you're learning because you need money to trade. And if you blow all your money, then you can't trade. So while you're absolutely. learning, you shouldn't even think about making money. You should think so, about learning. Absolutely. So we will come to risk management, uh, JJ. Uh, so one of the questions which, which we received several times, especially after the last session was, like unlike the US markets, which are 23 hours, Indian markets, they work only for six hours and 15 yeah. minutes. So in that case, how do you take into account the inventory, which is overnight? And also it means out of six hours and 15 minutes, it will take about one hour for the balance zone to develop. So how should you start from scratch with respect to a balance zone? So I will remove these existing drawings. Sure. And, uh, and then um, so we'll first start. Thing, yeah, right. first thing, go to, go to a simple daily chart. Okay. Daily chart means uh, daytime frame chart. Yeah, daytime because you don't you don't have an overnight session, right? Right. So let right. me make this a uh, day chart. One day chart. Okay, and I'll remove these drawings. You JJ, what's up? JJ. Okay. Hello. Guys, Hello. Uh, let's finish the session and then we'll move to here. Uh, Okay, Hello. so yeah, so this is the day time day time frame chart, JJ. Okay, so when you look at charts like this, right? It's because you don't have a night session, right? Mm -hmm. Say we looked at this day right here, right? Okay. The last two or you you're gonna have to use the inventory from the the two or three preceding days. Okay. So if the if the inventory for the two or three preceding days is above where current price is, you mm -hmm. know that there is supply. Okay. Right. If you're in a trend market 
and this day, you know that the inventory is below you, right? Mm -hmm. So then there's nothing to the left to sell into here. Absolutely. Here, if you look to the left, there are people who are trapped long in these areas mm -hmm. that will sell, right? Right. Now, in a market where you have balance, mm -hmm. right? Right. As soon as that balance is established after a day or two, then you can just trade the edges of that balance. Mm -hmm. Right. But the nice thing is once you look at that and you know that inventory is like, you know, here, like this day that we have, you can see mm -hmm. that under this level, the position is underneath where price is. So now that we've established a cost basis, we're going to go up here to sell it. Okay. So they're going to try and take the market sideways here to get rid of this up here for as long as they can. Okay. Right. So that gives you some sort of situation, situational awareness of what mm -hmm. to expect. Once you know what to expect, you can manage your expectations in a trade. Is it a trend day or is it just mm -hmm. back and forth? Right. Okay. Because it's in back and forth. It's like I can play tennis, both sides of this thing. Right. And then I don't know how much shorting you guys do. But you should learn how to go long first before you start learning how to short. Now, there's so a JP, very... uh, most of the group members over here. Uh, I think a large majority of them they they do with the options rather than with the futures, yeah. and in options also some of them would go with add the money or uh, very few go with the in the money options. But most of the people either go with add the money or the uh, out of the money options with respect to. So if they want to short, they will go with uh, add the money puts. Uh, and if they want to go long, they will go with the call side, actually. Okay. Okay. One thing that you want to remember if you're taking a short position, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, shorting means being able to identify if sellers are competing. Right. Right. There's no use you selling something that you don't own in right. an area where no, you know, the people who own it have no intention of selling it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What you need is, here's why price moves, right? Price goes up because buyers compete. Price moves down because sellers compete. Most mm -hmm. people don't know this because they've never sold 5 million shares of stock during a day or had to buy 10 million shares of stock for a client. So that's right. where this this comes in when you have like say i'm long at a certain price mm -hmm. and say say i buy you know 200,000 shares of stock under 5 bucks okay. right 5 dollars and it gets up to 6 6 and a, you know at 6 i want to start selling it but what if you're selling it there and 30 other people from the room are selling it there right yeah. right right who's going to capture the buyer it's like somebody walks into the store and there's six people selling fake rolexes Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, with one client, you're going to have to, you know, buy it from me. I'll give you a better price. I'll give you a better price. I'll give you a breath. And that's how price comes down Right, is when sellers compete. The only way to understand when sellers compete is to be a seller yourself, not a short seller, mm -hmm. a seller from a long position. So you get to recognize competition. When you get to mm -hmm. recognize competition, you become a much better short seller. So how do you recognize the competition, JJ? Because most of the people mm -hmm. over here are retail investors yeah. or yeah. traders. What you have to do is you watch the offer. It's a technique that I show in my room all the time. It's a very mm -hmm. simple technique of watching the offer. When the offer okay. starts getting lower and lower and lower, that means people are jumping over each other to offer at a lower price. So that is the red and green lines you use for bid and offer on the price exactly. chart. Exactly. Right? It's very right. simple. You don't need any fancy software or to spend any extra money. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's very, very simple. Now, the reason that you shouldn't be shorting, first of all, markets are not built for shorting. Right. You look at the premise of the market. Say you, you've never seen an old lady in the United States when, you know, in 1950, if she bought 100 shares of IBM and then go and put it in the safety deposit box, right? Mm -hmm. Because one day their grandchildren would have a million dollars. Nobody buys a stock so in 30 years their grandchildren can owe $2 million and be in debt, <laughs> right? Okay. The, the whole business of markets is capital appreciation. It is. Right? Shorting is a method that wholesalers use to get you the stock or the whatever you want at the price you want. 
Mm-hmm. It is a function of li- providing liquidity. The other right. thing shorting has done is to use is for hedge, hedging, right? right? And the way the markets are structured now, especially the U.S. market, is shorting is is just the dumbest thing to do. It's okay right. to short for a one minute, two minute time frame, those quick backfills, those quick right. price adjustments, but right. to be you know because people are you know people are short there are gaps in the U.S. S and P going back into November that right. still haven't been filled. Right. Right. We're 700 points higher. And these people, and you know, they're big hedge funds and stuff that are short. And then the other people just got destroyed. So, yeah, shorting is is not when you're a brand new trader, you should focus on going long because it is the most simple trade that you can that you can you can do every day and that you have to build that experience. Once you start learning how to go long, then we have another trade called the look above and fail balance of right. balance, right? Which, um, and then the other thing about shorting is you should never short the front side of the move, right? right? See, what happens is if this, for an example right here, what happens is people, they'll go and they'll short, they'll short this, right? Instead of waiting until it comes back down, right? Right. The reason why you should short this, it, the only reason that you should be shorting the front side of the move is say you're you're a huge player. Like say mm-hmm. in the S&P E-mini, most people trade one to five contracts, right? Bigger right. traders, 40, 50. The big players, they're trading 5,000, 10,000 contracts. They're moving billions of dollars around, right? Mm-hmm. So if you need that liquidity, you can short into the front side of the move and then cover when it when it comes down. So if you're short... 5,000 contracts, you know, and you're selling them here, here, and here. And then when it comes mm-hmm. off, you're buying them back here, here, and here. That's different. But for right. a retail right. trader shorting this, because you don't know where it's going to end. You wait until, it, until the sellers show themselves and start to compete and lower price, right? Then you hit it. Put your, then you have a playground. You know the edges of here. It's unknown. Right. But here, you can at least use those two candles, Right. right. So that you have your risk is minimized, right? So if you're short here and it takes out that, this is let you know cover your short, right? You know that that's the most important thing. So basically, because there's a question also about balance zone and comparing it with supply demand zones, what we see on top is a potential well, it, supply. It, 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 yeah, it is a supply like right. The the demand zone. Right. is the establishment of a cost basis. Cost basis. Let's say, right. let's, so you, you own a store, right? In Canada, right. they have these things called convenience stores where you buy cigarettes and candy and all that crap, right? right. right. And, you know, a gas station, right? But you don't right. buy the stuff that you sell in that store and sell it for the same price. You go right. to a wholesaler or where like a Costco or something and you buy it cheaper and then you bring it to your store to mark up and right. sell for profit. That's what business right. is. That's right. what the demand zone is. There's just right. different ways of of saying the same thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. right, right. So uh, moving from the one day chart, so we, now we have established that uh, the, the, the there's a cost basis which is developed in this area. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in this area, and yeah. now likely that there will be sort of a, a distribution of uh, this in this zone. Yeah, so as we'll, long as it holds we'll, over that level. Right. right. See, right. Uh, you know, if it if, if it closed right around that level, you mm-hmm. can wait until it goes back and forth over that level to show you whether right. it accepts or rejects that level. So this is on the day frame. Now we shift to yeah. the one minute chart and see sure. how we can start. So this is the one day profile, and yeah. JJ, this is at nine fifteen where the markets open. Yeah. And what I can see is, can we see this as a potential sort of a small Balance, uh, balance zone which is developed, right? Yeah, that's the that's the when the market opens, that's the initial balance, right? right? That is the initial establishment of cost basis. Right. So we have right. drawn this line, and then we observe it for some time by just uh, doubling it on top. Yeah. There you go. See how the the first double is almost to the exact, right? Exact. Right. 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 You know, and then the second double takes you up to where it, it just really moves higher. And right. then you just, you know, just keep doubling and doubling them. You'll be surprised how well it works. When, Actually, when, I, I, was, first, yeah, yeah. when I first started using it, 
um, you know, I would just, I watched just for months before I even took right. trades on it. Right, right. Um, you know. So, JJ, every time we double it, we double it in pairs, right? Two, two, yes. two. Like... Uh, two, no, no. Two, four, eight, sixteen. Oh man! So, so we see this at six. You have beautiful look over and fail. Yeah, exactly. This is two, two, four, and two, six. And yeah, this well, is that... no, no, just no, just always just go. There's the balance. Then you double it. Right. right? So this and this first area here. Let's let me, let me, let me, here, let, let me just one. change the color of balance once. Yeah. So this is the balance. Hmm. Here's times two. Right. And then here will be times four. Right. Right. And then times eight. So I'll make two more on top, right? Yeah. Yeah, so so these ones here. Seven and eight. Yeah, so this is times two. Yeah. Right, and then the next one will be two, four. Four. Yeah. So that's good for now. So you can right. see that you can see the beautiful look above four times balance. Um, and fail and then you can use these levels to to take you know to to book profits right Absolutely. so for example you know if you were short on the look at, like here you it looks above it fails mm -hmm. right so you're shorting it here you put your stop here and then you put some bids underneath this line to see whether or not you get filled right. if you don't get filled you know that the the trade's not working right, right. And as soon as it starts getting back over this line then you kill the trade then it looks above again and fails, right? right? And then comes down a little bit further so you can cover if it rotates mm -hmm. up. And then as you get good at doing this, then you can hold the trade all the way down to balance. Right, right. Right? right. And it's surprising, you know, because you do this trade so many times um, and just stick to the look above and fail at first. Don't worry about shorting, Right. Uh, you mean look below and fail, right? The, the look below and fail, yeah. The look right, below right, and fail, right. sorry, is, is based on supply running out, price going higher, right? right? The other thing, too, that makes going long easier than going short, the driver, the catalyst of movement higher is when shorts come into cover. When, oh, shorts, so come, <laughs> when, shorts, when shorts come into cover size, they hmm. do not hide their intentions because right, the, of the right. competition. But when you're a seller, you hide your intentions and you sell quietly so you don't spook the buyer. Right. Right, because it'll drive price down. So you mm -hmm. sell very judiciously, very, you know, totally. and so that's harder to see. It's harder to spot. It takes more experience, right? right. Whereas mm -hmm. competitive buying from short sellers is very obvious. Mm -hmm. And the more you look at the charts and the more you trade them, that'll become very obvious to you. Yeah. So we see beautiful look above uh, and fail. And also we can see yeah. over here, like this is look below and fail, which exactly right picks up over here and goes, you know, three, yeah. three, three balance zones and back. Yeah. You know, and it, the whole thing is practice. First, just start practicing it on charts. What I did when I started was I would try, I would look at Apple and Microsoft and Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I would just find balance zones and I just watch. Okay. Right. Uh, a lot of the power, when you first start trading, you should watch mm -hmm. more than execution because okay. as soon as you take a trade, your IQ drops a hundred points. It does. It the does. reason is because you are emotionally attached to the outcome of the trade. Right. Right. Because there's money at stake. When you're Absolutely. watching, there's no attachment to the outcome, mm -hmm. right? And that's how you gain experience without losing money is by watching. And then if you're especially a new trader, trade on the sim so you get to understand how the software works and get good at the mechanical, physical aspect of trade execution. Mm -hmm. Because until Elon puts that chip in our head, we still have to move our finger on the trackpad or the mouse, <laughs> right? Right. right? Okay. So it's a physical act and that physical act needs to be practiced. Just like mm. kicking a soccer ball or throwing a cricket ball. Right. So the hand-eye right. coordination works over here also. It is, <laughs> yeah. It's it's surprising. Most people don't even think about that. And mm -hmm. the other thing too is when you're on sim, 
don't pretend it's a video game, right? right. Just like right. a pilot when they're in a simulator, they're not crashing the plane just for the heck of it. Right. See, right. you know, they they for them, the simulator is like flying the plane. And what mm -hmm. the simulator is doing is it's trading training you to think and act in a fluid manner, like a surgeon, right? I mean, if you went into surgery and the guy's doing surgery on you and he's hang on, can you get the manual for a second? You know, <laughs> or you know, yeah. a pilot, you know, hits turbulence and you 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 know, you see him flipping through the manual. Yeah. Hey, it's not really, you know, that doesn't inspire confidence, right? Right. right. So it's just practicing. The really the biggest thing in retail trading when you start is l l practicing how to take a loss. Yeah, right? that is important actually. Right, that is the most important thing because you're gonna you're not gonna make money when you first start trading. Right, that's the biggest misconception. You know, like people, I need to make some quick money. Teach me how to trade. I'm like, yeah, you know, or they say I want to quit my job and learn and you know and trade. I'm like, uh, you know, that trading is the hardest work you're ever gonna do. Right. Actually, not many people speak like this. They actually, really? The, the, the whole sort of a ecosystem, I don't know about outside India, but at least over here, the sort of a fin influences, as we call, yeah. means the sort of education which is being promoted is, you know, spend 15 minutes and make side business. And, you know, so now, there's the, nothing wrong with that. But in, in North America, all these people want to quit their job and trade. And right. I tell them, and, you know, and I go, that is the craziest thing. Don't quit your day job because, right. you know, I didn't, you know, it's good. Then maybe, you know, in India, they're a little bit more practical, which, mm -hmm. you know, which is pretty good, you know. No, no, no. What I mean to say is they say that you just spend 15 minutes and they don't explain that it takes, you know, 1500 hours to practice for that. Yeah, so that it's, you it's, can... yeah it's just like any skill that that's all right. it is. Trading is just a right. skill. And it, it's, you know, you, the more and more you do it, you know, the better, um, you know, the better you become at it. And just, you know, the biggest thing is to not trade big accounts and put a lot of money in and, you know, you just keep it small, be humble, you know, mm -hmm. and just keep it really like even myself, I've been trading for 30 years and I've taken stocks from 30 cents to $300. You know, I had once held a stock at thirty dollars on Nasdaq for three months at ninety RSI My to get God. a financing done. Um, mm -hmm. You know, created short positions. I did all sorts of these things, but when it comes to retail trading, uh, I never ever let my ego uh, get in the way of things. Uh, you, so there's you know, a, uh, yeah. So yeah. we spoke about inventory, and there is a question about uh, how do you sort of determine if there is a potential short covering or long liquidation that we can. Okay, short covering right. comes from below. Long liquidation comes from above. So let's right. go take a look and show you on this chart, right? Okay. So here, looking at our chart, this was our cost basis. Mm -hmm. We took it and we sold it here. Right. Okay, so this is the accumulation. This is the distribution for profit, mm -hmm. right? Which was a nice distribution. And then all right. of a sudden, the people, how, how the move down starts is the people who are long. See, we take this and we sell it to these people. They're right. looking for this, right? right. When that right. doesn't right. happen, you get the double top or whatever. They start getting nervous, right? And heading for the exit. Mm -hmm. When that happens, the people who are size wholesale traders here, mm -hmm. their cost basis is here. So they'll just sell the market right down to their cost basis. Right. 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 Then if, because the size of accounts that they're trading, mm -hmm. right, they can establish different cost bases. So if it breaks cost basis, they'll just keep selling the market and keep trading these swings until mm -hmm. they establish another cost basis and then do this again. Right. right. So usually that's what we have seen that after a sharp rally or a sharp liquidation, there is a sort of a, a balance to be developed, right? Yeah. See, so right. it takes time to acquire right. a product mm -hmm. and it's beautiful if you have time to sell it. And then right. when you put it on sale, it takes time to clean up all the inventory that's above. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 because not everybody here sells at the same time. That's why you get this. 
Right. Think of this like a washing machine, back and forth and back and forth, cleaning this out and cleaning that out. Mm -hmm. And also we see a lot of competition of selling, especially the vertical drops which are happening in one minute chart. Like exactly people right are competing here. to sell. Right. Yeah. Right. So and what so what I would do, Nalin, is say I had product here between twenty two thousand and uh twenty one nine fifty. Yeah, right. twenty two. Yeah. If I if I owned, you know, say a thousand contracts here, right? Mm -hmm. For example. Mm -hmm. And up here and through this move, I sold maybe five hundred. Just uh -huh. you know, right now, as soon as I you go and I sold you some contracts, maybe I sold you 50 contracts, mm -hmm. right? When I see that you start to sell, I will sell and undercut you. And then you will sell and then I'll undercut you. And then you will right. sell and I'll undercut you. And I can still make a profit all the way back down to here. Absolutely. Or even more because you have already sold 500 on top, actually. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So your cost basis has changed completely, actually. Mm hmm. Right, 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 right. Sounds good, JJ. Um, and uh, the other questions people have been asking, not specifically related to balance, is that how do you sort of a look at your portfolio or or a stock when it is at all time high? What sort of a markers you should keep, whether to exit, hold, or add? Well, here's the thing. First of all, when you get into any investment decision, mm -hmm. whether it's a trade or an investment, what what are the parameters? And I'm actually starting a new course coming out this year on how to okay. trade and invest in stocks. I, okay. I, I teach people how to trade futures and we have a course for that. But we're also um, for for stocks, your time frame, like say you're a young person, right? Mm. And you're buying a company and you're holding it for 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. That's a completely different time frame in the way you manage that investment versus whether you're taking a swing trade for six months or three months, mm -hmm. okay. right? So based on those parameters, right, it's it's very hard to have like a simple rule for everyone. So okay. say you're holding it for a swing time frame, like for example, say this was a six month chart, just for okay. example, right? And you had bought it here, right? Well, if you're holding this trade for six months, mm. right, as it moves up, you know, you use your balance zones and you start cashing out a little bit, right? Okay. You have your ultimate target and mm -hmm. the failure to get to that target, right? When you see this distribution, you'll be like, oh, you know, I think if it breaks this level, I'm going to be, I'm going to take my money and go. Okay. Right. Okay. And I can mm -hmm. always buy it back. Right. 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 Now, if it's for a 30 year period, that's different because, you know, I, I, you know, I would still be a seller and buyer because I, I've never bought anything and held it for 30 years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that goes, I mean, because I, I am an ex wholesaler, so I'm always a seller. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, you know, for, um, for long-term investments, right. I caution people that the chart, you know, the chart's going to tell you everything you need to know. Right. Okay. Chart. And if you're holding, a, if you're an investor in a company, um, mm -hmm. I don't know how it works in India with disclosure, but I know in the United States, they have a thing called Edgar and you go and look at the filings and you see whether or not how well that company is managing their business and how well mm -hmm. that company is managing their market. Because the market that the stock trades in and the business are two separate entities. That's okay. why you'll have companies that are supposedly doing well and their stock looks horrible because they keep issuing themselves stock for no, for free and okay. selling it, which dilutes the, the shareholder, right? Okay. Then sometimes you'll have companies that don't look that great on paper, like their books, but their stock chart looks really good, okay. right? Um, you know, because the stock is really well managed and it's tight supply. So okay. I don't know in India whether they have things as published float, um, those kinds of indicators yeah. because I don't have the knowledge, but it'd be yeah. interesting to find out. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I think um, uh, India also has a lot of regulations with respect to participation and with respect to who are the who are the major stockholders. Um, and there is also a threshold above which an investor uh, name will come up uh, with respect to percentage of holding. So this information is published regularly on BSE and NSE website. 
Um, so we have done JJ on Nifty. Great. Can we quickly also look at Bank Nifty, which is a little bit more volatile animal as sure. compared to Nifty? Uh, so just like before... I have a question. Sorry to cut you. I have a question in that Nifty, uh, if you mind. Uh, sorry. Nalan? Yeah, go ahead. What the hell? Yeah. What the hell? Uh, yeah, just one question that uh, in that balance zone, how would you identify a entry point and a stop loss? like? Okay. For... For me, uh, let's let's take a trade here. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, you use this, uh, Nolan. Can you expand that area? One second. Yeah. Sure. Is this good enough? Yeah, that's good. Now, here is an example where the market came down to this low. <laughs> And it actually didn't look below. Hollywood, Bollywood. Bollywood, Bollywood. One second. <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right. So say I wanted to buy this level, right? I would be a buyer between this level, just in this area here. Now, where would my hard stop be? Right? My hard stop, if I was buying this level, would be the bottom of that candle. Let me just go right. a little bit more vertical. Sorry. Yeah, no so that can, so that it's yeah. better. And just, yeah, and bring it over a little bit. All right. So right. yeah, for for example, like say, or let's let's use this as a look below and fail, because it's a classical, right? It looks below this level and then it fails. So I'm long here, right? My warning level is here. My hard stop is here. These are what are called structural stops because if mm -hmm. the order flow breaks that structure, my reason for being in the trade does not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So let's say here's the look below. Here's the fail. Long, warning level, hard stop. Right? And then what I do is I draw a line in the middle of this zone and say I bought five contracts here I would sell one here to see whether or not there's buying and then offer the rest of them higher. As soon as I'm a buyer, I become a seller. And as soon as I'm short, I'm a buyer, right? Yeah, so as soon as you're a buyer, you become a seller, right? So Yeah, as, yeah right. I don't wait. I don't wait and move my stop up. So say if this was $3 and this was 4 and this was 5 okay? Mm -hmm. So I buy when it looks below 3 and comes back up, there's my long, right? Three is my warning, and maybe 275 is my my hard stop, okay? Right, right. Then the first, and say I buy five units, right? I immediately will put one of them for sale here. Hmm. Why? Because this is how institutional traders trade. When you buy five, you put at least one to see whether or not anyone's going to buy it. If mm -hmm. nobody buys it, you can get out of the trade. Mm -hmm. Right. If people buy it, then you put your next order here, your next order here. And I w always like to sell before the target. I have been mm -hmm. taught over 30 years to sell into strength. Mm -hmm. Right. So by the time it gets to that 2240, I'm gone. Like you say, don't be a dick for a tick, right? So. Well, the other thing, you know, I had this old Italian man, you know, and he said, listen, kid, don't be greedy. A million here, a million there, it adds up. You know, right. he would buy a stock at 30 cents. It would go to 80 cents. He'd be, thank you. And then it goes to $2. He goes, enjoy the ride, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, inventory, holding on to trade positions is what we call inventory. Inventory, mm. like any business, ties up capital. Right. I want to be turning over my capital as much as I can, right? right? In a risk, in a responsible risk scenario. Right. Right. So Jerry, maybe over here, just like we did a look below and fail, can we see a look above and fail like something like this sure. over here? Right, yeah. like right here is a look above and fail. Right. right. So now here's the thing. Instead of shorting this part of the move, Wait mm. till it comes underneath that level and initiate your short. Right. And your warning level is the level there, and your hard stop can be the top of that candle. Right. Right. 
So this way, what happens is you have situational awareness when you're in the trade, just like right. a pilot has situational awareness of where the ground and where the sky is, right? right? So that way, when you, when you work, see, and at first it sounds a little weird, and when you're doing it, it takes a while to get used to it. But once you do this, mm -hmm. the beautiful thing is I've taken traders who used to have trouble getting out of bad trades or hold and double down and lose their account. All mm -hmm. of these things, right? Or get caught short and, and not being able to, this teaches you not to freeze. So right. when you see a trade not going well, you're out of that trade. It's almost like getting in the car and putting it in reverse or putting your seatbelt on. You don't even think about it because the longer you think about cutting a bad trade, the more expensive it gets to you, hesitation mm -hmm. costs you a lot of money. It does. It does. Right? So we train you not to hesitate. So getting out of a bad trade is like brushing something off your coat, like brushing breadcrumbs or, you know, chapati crumbs off your, off your shirt. Mm -hmm. You right. don't even think about it. You're not emotional to it. The trade, and we teach people that using a stop and getting stopped out of a trade, there's two reasons. Stops. One thing is their insurance. They protect your account, mm -hmm. right? Stops are a business expense. The other thing is stops give you information about whether or not you are judging the order flow correctly at that time. Sometimes okay. because I, my thing is I trade too early, right? I'm in too early and then I'll get stopped out and ah, oh, okay, I'm trading too early. I'm not mm -hmm. waiting for the, for the pattern to develop or waiting for them to conclude the business. So that's, that's really you know, what so then your stops are like you you put the stops in the system or like you oh, do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Always see, even never use this mental stop. This is another thing, right? Because mm -hmm. you'll never when when things go badly, you will hesitate. Right. right? You have right. to save yourself from that. So what I do is so say for example, if I was short at this level. I mm -hmm. automatically have a hard stop here, right? And if it gets above this level, I can elect to close the trade. But just right. in case I freeze or my girlfriend comes in the room or mm -hmm. the cat jumps on a keyboard, something like that, at least you know that the hard stops there, your insurance policy is in place. In place. Oh. Right? Oh. Oh. That That's always never, ever trade without a hard stop. Mm -hmm. People who tell you how to do that should be like beaten with a stick. It's just... <laughs> You know, okay. it's just because it, it's because you never react fast enough, right? We are uh, almost one hour and six minutes into it. We'll quickly take a look yeah. into Bank Nifty, the, the more violent sure. one. So I'll go back to the day chart so that the way we started with Nifty. So this is the day chart for Bank Nifty. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me just expand it a bit. Uh, this is the day chart. I'm... Uh, we can take it up from here, identifying the balance zone, the sort of expectations we have, and then we move to the minute chart. Sure. So here right now, I can see a bit of a balance developing right there, which is the absorption of all of these. See, right away from a chart, you can look at mm -hmm. this 47729. Anybody mm -hmm. who's long over here is they're trapped, right? right? Because if you were long here and the market's trading here, you're not happy. Right. Right. It, it, all you have to do is look to the left of where the price left. is, right? Mm -hmm. So once you establish that balance zone, then you double it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can get some sort of an idea. You know that when we get back to, to this level here, right? Here's one thing, right? There will be not everybody who's long here is going to sell here. They might right. be waiting. They might be waiting, like hiding in the bushes, waiting to sell here. Mm -hmm. So right. if you are long in this area, you can expect that you are going to have competition selling here. So you mm. might want to get out of your trade depending on your time frame there. Okay. Because you okay. know that there will be inventory or supply at that level because we spent time there. So in a way, what we are saying is that to, to clear that balance, this area, which is a huge sort of a potential supply zone, it will take some time before the sellers can be taken out for the markets to go up. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. Time, time. It takes time to distribute, and it right. takes time to accumulate. Right. Okay. And this is a sort of a distribution which has taken almost like one and a half months from six from the exactly sixth of December till seventeenth of January. The way the market has ranged, 
it has taken up supply all from here or even below and then try to distribute on top. Definitely. Okay. So then we move to the one minute chart over here. And like before, the red one is the standard deviation and all are one standard deviation up and down. So same way we will go with the balance zone here also, right, JJ? Because um, yeah. for example, let's say, um, so, so this is a bit late, but will this qualify as a good balance zone? That's perfect right there. Right? I, I see, I, it, this is really very cool because you can see, you can see the market sold off and accumulated mm -hmm. here. And then mm -hmm. right there, very tight distribution. Right. right? right. And right. then what happens is when that distribution occurs, that sideways motion mm -hmm. that instills confidence. Right. right. So anybody who's long in this area here, when they mm -hmm. see that there are buyers, they just stop selling the market. Zip, zip, zip goes up and then right. they get to sell up here. It's beautiful. Take it down. Sorry. Just... Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we'll just double it to see uh, till where exactly these zones they work out. Okay. Uh, control C. One. Two. Three. Four. <laughs> right to the tick of four balance. It's My God. Scary. It's scary. It's scary. <laughs> it is oh god and on the downside let's see how it is control c one control v three and four i'll just change this color to the balance so that it is like oh my can we just describe this chart a bit with respect to JJ, the look below and look above and fail over here? Sure. Uh, so this, so if this is your balance, right? Mm -hmm. This is the look above and fail, right? So when it looks above and fails, usually the target is right there. You see? We can't see the annotation as of now. Yeah, now it is coming. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, the look below and fail of balance is this is a look below and fail, and it goes right back to the top of balance. Right. So whatever time frame you're trading, right, this is a one minute. This actually looks very tradable. I don't know. I've never traded um, the Nifty, but mm. I mean, this looks very tradable. You know, I don't know what the price action is like. You should consider starting a room for Indian market changing. If there is a demand, I, I'm I'm willing to do that. Now the only problem is my girlfriend will not get let me wake up at two o'clock in the morning in the UK. <laughs> yeah, I, I think already, yeah, she's, yeah. She's, like, she's like, no way, your health, your your health, because you already had one heart attack. You're not doing it again. So right. uh, maybe for the close or to do a prep session before it opens and post it in the room, and then right. later do something at the close. Whatever the people like, you know. Um, so since we are on the room, like in your. Current room, you do two sessions. One is Globex, which is at 7.30 to 8.30, and other is the RTH. So what is the difference between these two sessions, and why do you do two sessions, AJ? Oh, okay. Well, I do two sessions because before the London markets open, and when the London markets open, in mm -hmm. the S&P ES futures, it's a 23-hour mm -hmm. market. Right. So there's different times of opportunity and different times when inventory cracks. So one of the inv uh, inventory corrections of the night inventory is right before or during the open of London and the European markets. So I okay. do an hour worth of teaching on Zoom, just like I am on here, but we <laughs> trade it. We have people who come in and ask questions. That's 7.30 GMT, right? right. Or London time. Then mm -hmm. at 2, uh, every day at 2 p.m., I do from 2 o'clock to, to 3.30 or 4.00, I do another hour and a half on Zoom to show people how to prepare for the regular trading hours open, the 9.30 open in New York, right? Right, right. So we we do that. And then after that, um, at 11 o'clock uh, New York time, every hour uh, for my coaching class, because what I do is I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching 
for mm-hmm. life. Um, it's a, it's, right. you know, it's a program where it's an eight week course and then you get one-on-one coaching with me for the rest until I die. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, you you got my number on WhatsApp and things like that. And mm-hmm. it's a little expensive, but, um, as coaching programs go, um, you know, to be able to pay a one-time fee and have access to me for all, you know, until, mm-hmm. and I basically, you know, once you join me in that sort of coaching program, I will basically haunt you until you become profitable. So, yeah. uh, you know, I it stay on top time, of actually. Yeah, yeah, it, it does take, take time. time. Yeah. 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 Like it is said, it is the hardest way to make easiest money, actually. So. It is, you know, retail trading is the, I've worked in, in finance. I've been on trade desks. I've done corporate finance. I've taken 200 companies public. I've done investor relations. I've done everything. I've done clearing, settlement, all of those things. Um, retail trading is the hardest job in finance because you can't cheat. You, know, you can't. That's, I... No, yeah, there's no way to do it. So JJ, uh, I'm just opening up questions to any viewers. If there are any sure. questions, go ahead. Sure. Uh, either you can raise your hand, type it, or just, just hop on and ask the question. <clears throat> Let me quickly check if there are any questions in the in the chat over here. And then uh, we will, there's somebody's typing, just give me. Meanwhile, there was one question which talked about uh, so just can you talk a bit in terms of risk management not for the day trades but in terms of slightly swing or long term jj risk management should always be based on structure in a trade okay. so okay. there is a there's actually the way we teach it there's we have trade setups the trade setup is a business process so there is a business process that we follow. And if the trade stops making sense in that business process, then we get out of it. And it's something mm-hmm. that we teach you to do over and over and over again. It's all based on the business. So the structure of the transactions tells you what business is going on so you can actually manage your risk in an intelligent manner. If you're a larger trader, we can help you manage your risk with size. We can okay. actually uh, it help you manage your risk with time all of those things. Okay. Uh, and the last question, JJ, over here is that uh, you talked about um, uh, balance zones. And also sometimes what we see is there's a stop loss hunt or we see a spike. So if there is a sort of a change, so should we at any point of time consider remarking the balance zones? Well, in now I have not watched, I, I used to do balance loans for Nifty um and it was uh definitely um it worked really really quite nicely um mm-hmm. and for you know the daily uh okay. balance but um i would have to i know once i have my balance zones set and i do my balance zones in in the globex trading so for right. you you'd be doing your balance zones early at night uh, i mean early in the morning because you got to okay. remember the balance is the cost basis. So if you went into a market and somebody was selling dal or rice, mm-hmm. right? They right, have right. for that day, they've got their inventory that they've paid a certain price for, and then it'll be right. double that price, four times that price, depending on how much demand comes in. Right, right? Right, right. So it works really well. You don't have to change it. That's the nice thing. Okay. So we have a couple of questions if we can take, and then we will wrap it up. Just two questions. Uh, Sora, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Nalin. Hi, JJ. Just hi. Uh, wanted to ask that uh, how we will trade this pattern, uh, like if this is the mid-up chart, right? So we are able to easily identify the balance zone. But in the live market, like suppose uh, at 10.35, we can see there is a look above. So how we can identify this in the in the live market when the pattern is uh, developing? How can we identify whether this breakout is going to happen? No, no, no. This balance oh. zone is going to be made. Uh, how we can uh, enter in the loop above uh, pattern? Like this is the already made up chart, right? So we are able to identify this is the balance zone. But in the live market, the it will not be a full chart. No, no, no. So what you do is you have to wait until the chart builds out a little bit, my friend. 
so we'll have to um, uh, like it, it it is uh, okay to miss the first uh, look above right at 10 40 oh here's 10, the thing here's the thing here's the thing in trading right because we are retail traders we don't get to control the order flow so the first thing that you do when you sit down is you don't start trading you wait for the market to build itself out because you don't have the option of having an overnight session right so that creates a little bit of a problem the problem is that you have to maybe wait 20 minutes half an hour and let it establish this balance on a one minute chart you see what i'm saying right yeah yeah got it got it but that's a good thing because what it does is it slows your brain down and it calms you down so at first when you realize oh you know what i don't have to trade it puts you in a nice calm state where you can observe things and you can observe things objectively and you'll be a surprised at how much better your trading is when you take some time to observe before you execute. So there is a follow-up question, which I'm sure you're going to love. So somebody is asking uh, that, do we use any other tool just like order flow or something else to okay. see whether it's going to be look above and fail for rotation no. in zone? Use a simple candle chart. Okay? Right. All this order flow stuff, right, is marketing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know what order flow is? Order flow is the market. Buy orders flow in, sell orders flow in, they get transacted. Those transactions are recorded either on a ticker tape, like in the old days, or now right. on a chart. They're right. just a record of the transactions. All mm -hmm. of this stuff that these guys are trying to sell you for extra money, you don't need, okay. right? Keep yeah. it simple. You know, before, what, let's say before 1995, before they had, you know, good graphics on computers, how did mm -hmm. people trade? I mean, I started in 1992, right and right. you know they didn't even have charting software that they could run they, they had 286 computers right so here's the thing and before that in the 80s there were no computers you know what how people used to trade with a piece of paper and a pencil they did right you right. don't need any of that stuff right so one last question from rushi uh rushi please go ahead hello Nandine. hello Jojo. hey oh uh, uh yes uh, uh nice to hear you once again uh, actually you. i would like to actually i would like to ask uh, something uh, uh, regarding uh, pyramiding uh, if you, if you want to do pyramiding in your trading once our trade is uh, going to in our favor and we are increasing our position size step by step so if you uh, uh, so share some insight from me well first of all i would highly recommend recommend against pyramiding if you are not consistently profitable right and what does that mean are you paying all your bills from taking small trades then you can start pyramiding and holding because what pyramiding and holding is you're developing another skill and that skill is how to manage the trade when you're in the trade right which mm -hmm. is very hard to do for most people because they don't know how to get out of the trade quickly if it goes wrong, right? So if you're now, I don't, I've just met you. So maybe you've been trading for 20 years and you know, you're making your living by trading. Pyramiding is something I can help you with, but it takes time. And I have specific techniques using the business to help you stay in the trade or size out of a trade. And all that is, is managing your risk with size, right? So if you get into a position and the position holds these levels, you can stay in it or add to it. But when the position starts breaking, say, your warning levels, right? And that warning level is like somebody going, hey, 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 you know, trouble's coming. Then you start reducing the size, right? And to do that and pyramid, you need to have a large account because you are going to have to cut losses sometimes. Those are business expenses. Those business expenses are larger for you in that type of a trading situation versus business expenses and just taking trades and learning how to be profitable. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Thank DJ. You. We are already Thank like you. one hour, 25 minutes. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, and no by when do you expect your book, JJ? I'm still working on it. I'm still. <laughs> <laughs>
working on it. I, I'll get it done. Hopefully, I finish it before everybody gets tired of uh, nobody wants to read it. But no, yeah, no, no we'll, we'll, it. <laughs> it will be an insider view, and we eagerly look forward to. I can see a lot of hands and questions, but what I would request is if they can aggregate the questions on the Telegram, and I will check with JJ, and sure. uh, I'll get the responses because we don't want to hold him any longer. Uh, it's already 20 minutes um, above what we had uh, requested for. So thanks once again, JJ, on behalf of the entire FTO trading community. Thanks a no lot. Problem. Wishing no you problem. good for your future's room. Yeah, and we look and to the India I, uh, launch. The other thing is, yeah, we'll we'll think about an India launch. And um, my Twitter is VWAP Trader one Right. Um, and uh, my future's room is microefutures.com. You can DM me, um, you know, I, I, I try and answer as quickly as possible. And uh, thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate and it. And it is an unreasonable request. Uh, we have been getting some queries with respect to a sort of a special offer for the group. If there's anything, please DM me so that yes, uh, yeah, I will share it with the yeah. moderators. And if it is yeah. appropriate, we will share it with the groups. Yeah, definitely. We'll get Steve to give you a, a discount code or something like that. And you can. Right. And, uh, Thanks a lot, JJ. Thank Have a so great much. day ahead. Thanks a Thank lot you. to all the members for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>